Well, hello, boys and girls. When I feel like at a clock again, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. And we have the great Joe Borak here again today. You're coming a regular thing here, buddy. I don't even have to beg him anymore. It's almost like he wants to be on here now. It's pretty cool. So we have uh, been, uh, you know, all about us, right? Because you're hitting the subscribe and the bell, and that's awesome. All the new subscribers we're having, thank you very much. Uh, we are, uh, we like to go in depth and look at each individual teams, um, in a, in a very in-depth way. So if you like that kind of programming, you're going to love this type of programming. We've been doing Nashville Predators. We did Pittsburgh Penguins. We're kind of looking, taking a look at teams that are exiting the playoffs and where they're heading, yeah. heading their, uh, future in the summer for free agents and such. And, uh. Um, this time, we thought we'd look at the Minnesota Wild. Uh, very interesting team. Uh, Bill Guerin has come out and said himself that a few things, like he's not very happy with their goaltending, uh, that he definitely would like to see some changes, that there's going to have to be changes over the summer, much like David Poyle did with, with Nashville. However, I think we're going to see things in a different light, different way here. They're, they're they're a team in transition, but it doesn't look like they're, they they need to go through a full rebuild here. Not at uh, all. No, no. So where where do you think they most likely? Also, you have some information or uh, 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 an article that is very interesting as an option for them as well. You can bring that up as well. But where do you think they most want to look at in Minnesota to improve as a team and where they're going in the future and now? Well, obviously they should retool like Nashville. They have a good team. You don't want to rebuild. Obviously, you don't. You're not going to rebuild when you have the contract of Ryan Sutter and 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 Spurgeon. You paid Spurgeon because you like him. His contract kicks in next year, so rebuilding makes absolutely no sense. Um, so you go to retool. I, I think, like you said, they're probably at a goaltender. There's probably going to be a veteran because they really do like Cockenham. Um, and I don't think you're going to bring in two young goalies, unless if it's via the draft and you draft Askarov, because then that's a completely different story. But in terms of the free agent market, I don't think you're going to bring in two young goalies. Um, I would say they're going to get a veteran goalie to play with Kakanen. That would be their first move. And their next move is going to be adding veteran defensemen that are more solidified than um, Susie and um, and others on their back end like Burkowski and Brad Hunt and all those guys. Well, because when Sutter comes back, similar to Nashville, they're more of a defense that's four deep. They run. They're going to run Dumba, Brodine, Spurgeon, and Sutter, and then beyond that, you don't have the biggest consistency, obviously. So. You would like to see them probably as wild fans get more consistency back there. And there's a couple good defense. So we mentioned Edmondson and Forber in the past video that would definitely fall into a category TVR. Um, the list goes on of good, just solid veteran. You just know there are good five, six that can be consistent for you in when coming in and out of the lineup. Cause we know they like Susie as much as, uh, um, we might think he's just, I think he's a six maybe, but he's playing four for them. He's definitely not a four. Um, so you're going to want to get somebody else. I think two people in there. Another guy is obviously Braun from Philly because they're not going to keep him. I don't think, um, Tanev could be, but he'll be more pricey than those guys. So Braun could work. And if you just want a veteran, that's good. Um, that still plays and doesn't get injured really much. You can get Andy Green as a sixth defenseman, but you, he would be your sixth defenseman, and then you would probably want like a Dylan or a, somebody that's a good defenseman, another good defenseman to be your other guy, and then you could have your sixth defenseman as a Andy Green, and that could work out. Yeah, um, definitely I think you would – uh, you're, I think I agree with you completely about having to add to their defense because looking at their depth 
chart on defense, I, I don't really see much of anything that's ready to play soon. Um, maybe Kalen Addison, uh, but second round pick in uh, 2018, he's looked decent. Um, 52 points in the, in the WHL, um, but he's still very young, and most defensemen are going to take a couple years of AHL. Uh, there's nobody knocking on the door is what I'm trying to say. So they're, they're probably going to have to add some veterans to that defense to, until they can start drafting some defensemen. That is something that's going to be big on the list for uh, Garen, I would think, in the next little while because they got to restock that cupboard. Um, they're not a rebuild mode, but if they don't get the, the cupboard restocked in the next couple of years, they're certainly looking at a very big rebuild here in Minnesota, and I don't think anybody wants that. Uh, as far as goaltending is concerned, um, we were we discussed this before. We we do a lot here, by the way, boys and girls. Sometimes we'll talk about this for two hours before we do a video. Um, we were thinking that uh, uh, Kalkinen does look good. He looked he looked really good at the end of the year. I think they're going to give him every chance to uh, to get take that back up role. However, you've got a guy that's cheap and stalic that. If he loses the backup to Kalkinen, that's fine. You can put him down in a, you know, he, he can, you can put him through waivers and somebody picks him up, somebody picks him up, or you can be your third guy. Or he, can, he played solid enough to be a backup. The question is, what are we doing with um, Dubnik? What's going to happen here? We were talking about possibly looking towards a guy like Bernier in Detroit and making a trade to give Dubnik a chance to extend his career in Detroit and maybe bring a guy like Bernier back. Um, if they are going to get another goaltender, it doesn't really appear that getting a younger goaltender when you have Kalkinen would be a wise move. Would you agree? Yeah, that's why I said the only way I think they'll do it is via the draft. Cause if you can get Asker off, he's going to take a few years anyway. No goalie gets drafted and then plays. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> So uh, you would have Cockin and playing. If he does very well, you then fall into a fantastic problem on your hand because you have two goalies of value as long as Askarov plays like he's supposed to play, and then you can trade either one of them, and you're going to get good value. So that's the only way I see them also getting a good young goalie if it's him. Otherwise, yeah, I, I agree. It's going to 100% be a veteran netminder. We talked about Hudobin in the past. If you can lure him out there, that's a potential. Obviously, Tomas Grice is a good veteran guy. That's a 1A, 1B um, prospect goaltender that's done that a lot in his career and has been successful in those types of roles. So I think he's a guy. Uh, if you want someone to be maybe the starter to start the year and then hand over the reins to Cockadin, then Corey Crawford might be a one-year option. That would be more if you want somebody if you want somebody to be your starter, and then it's going to be okay. We want the kid to play himself into being in a one A one B competition, and then when he does that, which will probably be during next season, in my opinion, then Crawford would start being in the one A one B role. But if they did that, I would think they would start him off as a starter probably, because um, he's a little bit of a bigger name than the other two. Talbot's also potential. He's a veteran. I believe the Flyers will keep Moose, but if they don't, uh, he's a veteran for 1A, 1B. Um, so, like, I, I think they're going to go with all veterans here um, because there's no reason to bring in a youngster uh, when you have a youngster that you trust. You might as well bring in a veteran. And I think their guy, if I was picking, I would pick... Tomas Grice, I think, because he just has had experience with different teams. Um, he's been in that role before. I like him as a backup, uh, or not even a backup, a 1A and a 1B, excuse me, but or a backup, whatever the hell you want to do with him. But I just think he's a player. He proved on the Sharks he can play a good handful of games at times. Uh, he also proved that uh, with the Isles, obviously. And then he did good uh, as a backup with the uh, Coyotes. So I think he's a guy, if you want someone that can play about 35 to 40-some change 
games to put in with your other goalie. I think or fifty. So he's played like fifty before a couple times. Uh, Grice is a pretty good guy to have for one to two years, especially with a young goalie, because um, he's been in situations like that where goalies have been coming up when he's been in places in the past as well. So I think he would be the guy I would pick. But I'm interested to see what a uh, veteran uh, you would pick. Well, I, I I like the idea if we could get rid of Dubnik's contract, give him a shot in Detroit, and bring him by bringing in a guy like Bernier if Detroit doesn't sign him. But I do like Grice as a possibility as well. Um, I like Grice as a possibility as well uh, because of all the things that you, all all the everything you said. Um, he would obviously get another chance to be a number one there too because he's going up against a young guy, Kalkin, mm-hmm. that's unproven. He probably would be interested in a play like that, which would be great. Um, that being said, uh, we got we first of all, let's go into a little bit that article you were talking about uh, with uh, who was that again that we talked about an interesting uh, play that they could do over the off season. Yeah, uh, it was Anthony Sorelli, uh, somebody for the uh, overtime heroics. I'll pull up the article. It was Delhi. Delhi was the one that did. No, I said somebody for the overtime heroics. I oh, okay. Oh, right okay, for okay. um, it was Aaron Heckman. He's one of the writers oh. uh, for the Wild. Um, they could offer sheet Sorelli because if you look on the website, um. Where'd it go here? Hold on, let me find it. If you look on the website, I'm trying to see where the figure and here it is. It's evolving hockey. Their contract projection for Sorelli is six years with an average AAV of over five eight. So if the Wild were to acquire him via an offer sheet, it would almost certain have to be in the six point three five or more tier because that's the next tier of pay uh to get him and then the lightning might debate because the lightning's uh salary cap situation ain't the best to say the least um so they're a team if you offer him upwards of six and a half and more that's when the lightning would probably actually start having some inner discussions. Like, are we actually able to do this? Or do we just want to take all these draft picks we're going to get? Because the other thing people have to remember is when you give somebody that tier of pay, you have to give up a first, second, and a third. And right now they don't have the third, but it might be you can give up another. I forget how that works with um, if you're able to give up another one later or if they just will acquire a third. Acquire to make that work yeah but um the the lightning really if you look at next year and you look at their um cap space they only have five points something uh according to um sport trick so i mean at about five four i'll round that up uh you're not looking at being able to match almost $7 million to Anthony Sorelli. You're going to have to, even if you get rid of Kalorn, you're still not sitting too pretty to match that because that gets rid of four, four, five, and you still have other guys you have to worry about in the near future. So if you match that, you're still going to be locking yourself up for other guys you have to worry about. So, that would be interesting for the Lightning once they, if they go that high. Um, yeah, it, they've got they've got uh, Chernak to sign. They've got uh, Serg- Mikhail Sergachev to sign. I have a feeling that they're exactly. going to have to trade Chernak. Anyways, um, they would loathe to get rid- to lose Sorelli. I, I can tell you that right now. Um, I think if for sure Alex Kalorn or somebody that is willing to waive their no trade, um, possibly, I mean, wow, yeah, they are in a tough situation there uh, to uh, with what they're going to do for the future and how they're going to uh, balance that. So I definitely think that they would match it at six, some with something like that. But what they would do to uh, 
change that or to uh, try to compensate for that is worrisome. <laughs> they might That's have to. I don't know if they would get if they went if they went above um, six and a half. As much as they like Sorelli, I don't think the Lightning are going to trade point. I do think for cap relief, if they were to have to match an offer like that, they would probably have to move uh, if they couldn't get rid of someone like McDonough, maybe, even though they like him because of uh, how much Sergachev's going to get paid. You might have to explore what you could get for him because Cernok's not going to get paid anywhere damn near close to Mikhail Sergachev. So he's a good defenseman, but he's not a potential elite top defenseman in the NHL. He's just a top four, though. He's a top four. defenseman. Um, Oh, yeah, but Mikhail Sergachev's a potential top two. Uh, That's what I'm saying. That's the guy you're going to be – that's the guy you got to be signing right off the get-go for sure. Where uh, Cernok's a very good, solid top four for years to come, not a top-of-the-league defenseman every year. Uh, He might be a top-of-the-league defenseman some years, how guys creep into the the top-of-the-league stat and then aren't in there every year. But, um, yeah, that's why I don't think they're going to match it if they go much above 6'5", because you got Andre Palat until the end of 2021-22, point you're going to want to keep in that organization and you only have them for a good contract until the end of 21-22. Um, you're not going to be able to get rid of Stam because nor do I think they want to. Uh, Tyler Johnson, they could trade if they want to, but they really like Tyler Johnson. He has a no trade, so you would have to okay it. But if they're able to get him to do something there, that's $5 million. But I know – they adore him and how he fits into their lineup, so that might be a tough pill to swallow for them, but sometimes you have to absorb a tough pill to swallow, and I think if they want to keep Sorelli, it might have to be at the fate of someone like Tyler Johnson, just looking at that now, because Kalorn's not going to make you feel very warm and fuzzy about your cap still if you just get rid of Alex Kalorn. Uh, Especially when you have to add it to your... Because we have to remember with them, they still have to add to their defense because Kevin Shattenkirk, they signed for one year, who's not going to get paid 1.7 again. So, uh, Braden Coburn's paid 1.7 next year, and you probably don't want him as your, let me look at this, uh, as your potential fifth best defenseman. Um, Because that's about what that would be going into next year um, as guys that are signed. And then you have Jan Ruda, who's and then Zach Bogosian, who's unsigned, and Luke Shen, who's probably not going to be re-signed, unless if he just takes 700 k again. Um, so, like, that's why they have a lot of crap to worry about. It's going to become worrisome for them. I think it's going to have to be at the fate of someone. that I know they're not going to get rid of a gourd because he's like a Swiss Army knife, similar to Johnson, but he's that at 28 compared to 30. I think they'll get rid of Tyler Johnson and they'll just have to swallow that tough pill of how much they love losing that type of player. I just looked at the NTCs and and none of them are, all of them have like 10 team no trades and stuff like that. I honestly think that they'll trade Andre Palat and Alex Kalorin before they get rid of uh, Sorelli. Uh, they have some young guys coming up, like Mitchell's, um, St- Mitchell Stevens can move up, Carter Byrie can move up. I think that's likely to happen. But since we get back to Minnesota, because the Minnesota fans are the ones listening to this, let's say for a second you gave them seven, okay? And they went, okay, you guys take them. You give up your first, uh, second, and third. Uh, and uh, Minnesota now has him. They now have very little cap space themselves and uh, no more draft picks to be able to improve. Uh, What do you do with this defense with that little limited space? We just leave it as it is. I'm not sure. I see where he says. I'm not sure it would be the best way to uh, go about it myself, but I definitely see why he's saying what he's saying, because I love Joe Cervelli. I I think that uh, he would be fantastic there. Uh, in Minnesota as well, if they could happen to grab them, I'd be a little more comfortable. Well, they have sixteen. They would have. The yeah, they would have about. So if you do sixteen, I rounded it up to sixteen point three, minus say they paid them seven. 
you would still have 9.3 to play with, and we're not talking about, like we said. You got to at- sign Hunnan and Greenway yet, though. Yeah, oh. sign Cunning and Greenway up. Okay, then you would probably have say you give each of them two something. You would have four point eight. Uh, yeah. Four point you have about four point five left. Um if you give each of them high like somewhere in the two somethings uh for a one year or whatever to let your cap balance out. Um you would have 4.5 left to sign a sixth and a fifth and sixth defenseman, and you could get uh, maybe some better. Andy Green, you could definitely get in with 4.5 left on your cap. Uh, you could get some you, filler guys on your bottom. Yeah, you could 100%. And, that, and they don't need much other than that because, like I already said, they have a good top six – or top four, excuse me. They just don't have beyond their top four. Their lines are very inconsistent beyond their top four. That's all they have to worry about there in Minnesota. They don't have to worry about their top four defense. They have to worry about their bottom two defense. And Andy Green ain't a bad guy to add to your bottom two defense. And he, you can definitely bring in if you have about 4.5 or 4 million left on your cap. Um, you can definitely bring in Mike Green if you have that left on your cap, but he had a terrible season, so you would have to hope. Um, I'm trying to see other guys. TV you could bring. You could bring, you could bring it. T- I don't TV. know if you get. Two, I don't know if you get Van Rooms back. I think you're looking at about three and a half million. But okay, let's say they don't do that, and uh, we look at they keep their first round pick. Let's look at their first round pick. Now, I was first of all, I was thinking of a guy like Askarov, but you brought Kalkinen up, and um, they've got a year to see if Kalkinen's going to be as good as he we, you know, they think he's going to be at 24 years old. He's at that stage of his career where you can get a pretty good read on what a goaltender is going to be. So I was originally thinking that they were gonna, they could take Askarov with uh, their first round pick. And we're going to end it off on here because we're getting a little long. Now, at the number nine, I'm going to go over really quick. This is what I'm hearing what's going to happen. New York Rangers are going to take Lafreniere. LA is going to take Byfield. Ottawa, probably Stutzla. Detroit, I hear, is going to take Perfetti. That would leave uh, Ottawa to take Drysdale or Raymond, and I think they'll likely lean to Drysdale, although I really hear they like Raymond, but it doesn't matter either way, because then Anaheim would definitely take um, some have one of those people. guys. Anaheim would take either one of those guys. I think New Jersey would take Holtz. Buffalo, if they haven't traded already, would take Rossi, and that would leave Minnesota with... Um, Askarov, Seth Jones, Jake Sanderson, Connor Zari, Dawson Mercer, Dylan Holloway. Which one do you think they take here? Um, yeah, there's also uh, Jack Quinn if you want to score. Jack Quinn. Jack Quinn. Yeah. There's also Quinn if you want to score. Um, I don't know. A lot of people have him taking a chance on Lundell. For his double-sided play, his 200-foot game. That's also why a lot of people have them picking Connor Zari because he has a 200-foot game. And Minnesota likes having forwards that play that 200-foot game. If that grouping and none of the Swedes, because I'm pretty sure how you just said that, none of the Swedes would have fell to them. Um, Connor Zari might be a potential pick they would get or a Lundell because... They're not getting the guys falling to them that they wanted to um, hopefully fall to them, and it just uh, didn't happen, obviously, uh, for them. So that's uh, another two-way winger that's been a little rumored is the guy from the KHL, uh, Radion Amiroff, because he also plays a um, two-way game, and um, he would definitely uh, need to put on weight but he can definitely be a top six winger um, with potential and all that. Um, and he plays the 200-foot game, is great at transitioning, uh, in transition play, excuse me. Um, so that could be a potential. 
it really depends what you want. If they're trying to add just straight up scoring, they should probably pick Jack Quinn because he's the best to add straight up scoring out of all the people you said would be off the board at that point. If you want to add top notch uh, two way play with potential, that would probably be the kid from Russia because if he puts on more muscle, he might be a top forward, a top line forward rather than uh, where I believe Connor Zare and Ludell will be top six players, maybe, but probably a second line center. If that kid from Russia, I mean, if he puts on a mirror of some muscle, he has the skill in a 200 foot game to be a potential winger on that top line for somebody. So I wouldn't be surprised if they take a risk with him and try to develop him because he has a lot of uh, skill out there. And they need defense. So if they take Sanderson, that wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. Uh, um, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a team that they had – or a team. A guy they had them reaching for um, was – uh, because of his speed and defense is Holloway who played for Wisconsin because he can play center in the wing. Um, he doesn't have the highest um, overall dynamic uh, potential to grow, but you just know he's a little bit more physical than guys like Bork, Mercer, or LaPerriere, so he would bring more physicality. Uh, and Quinn, like he's more physical than guys like that. I've heard of them reaching for someone like him because everybody believes, including myself, he'll be a solid, a very solid NHL. And the problem is I don't know how much he'll go past very solid. So I don't know if you want to draft that at nine. But that's kind of where you get into a debate there. Do you just want a very solid career player at nine? Or are you trying to get that guy that actually is really going to help your top six? And if you want the latter... I would draft all the other guys I said in Sanderson, Quinn, uh, Amirov. And if other guys fall, you should draft one of the Swedes. Because I think there's a chance some of them fall. Like, if a, well, obviously, if a Rossi falls to them, but if a Raymond falls to them, you should draft Raymond. But yeah, if he does, sure. it, yeah. But well, if he doesn't, but if he doesn't, if, well, 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 well yeah, if Holtz falls to them, I'm, I love Alex. I love Holt. Uh, if Holtz falls to them and they don't draft Holtz, they probably hit their heads on the steps uh, coming into draft day because uh, that's a huge mistake if he falls to nine and you just look at that and go, nah, we don't need him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, boys and girls, okay, here's what we got. They either go get Sorelli, which I don't know. Looking at it, I think I'd rather keep the draft pick and build my own guys. They uh, were, were you know, Minnesota Wild go and get Bernier uh, or – uh, Nick Grice, we have him getting Grice, so we'll see if this happens. And uh, if when they go to the draft, I like Jake Sanderson myself or Askar up in that spot. Um, if they're going for a forward, you brought up an interesting one with Dylan Holloway there. He seems like a Minnesota type player. They may go reaching for somebody like that, Connor Zari, possibly as well. It's going to be mm. interesting to see what Bill Guerin does with this lineup. He did mention for sure that goaltending was going to be an issue. So Minnesota fans, look for a different goaltender next year. Tell us in the comment section if you're happy with that. And uh, tell us in the comment section if you think we have some interesting stuff here to talk about. Uh, if you agree with what we're saying or if you have anything else to add. This has been Joe Boric, who is one of the finest writers in the land and turning out to be a very good friend of mine and joining us and coming on this program all the time. We're going to be reaching, I think, I'm going to look at possibly the Toronto Maple Leafs next time. Um, I hope you've been enjoying this fine program. Tell them, Joe Bork, where, you, where we can find you. One of them, for sure, is Steel Flyers. You can find all my information on steelflyers.com. Go check it out. Great website. Yeah, that's a, that is a great website. Everyone must check that out. All of our stuff's on there. You can also find us at True underscore Philly Sport for True Philadelphia and Sportscast on Twitter and Sports Fanatic News spelled with a P on uh, YouTube. And also, I'll give you uh, one more guy going out. Caden Gould someone I think they could reach for because his speed allows him to play whatever the hell you, type of game you want him to play. And he yeah. can be a grinding player and physical at 6'2", and he's got to grow into his body. He, yeah. th I, he, how you said... Uh, 
Holloway reminds me of a Minnesota type forward. He reminds me of a Minnesota type defenseman they might want to add. I think that's just another guy I figured I would give as a going it's out. It's going to be interesting to see yeah. where he goes for sure. Thank you very much, boys and girls, for listening to this fine program. Hit the subscribe and bell, comment in the comment section. Catch you next time. Lots Enjoy of the hockey. Media.